Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett, it's the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, the boy on the West Coast we like to talk to the most. Oh boy, I'm a poet and I don't know it. Uh, yeah, it's Larry Bowles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. Yes. Uh, you know, we were talking about cars the last time. I remember. I love that 300 ZX you had. Yeah, that was the 300 ZX. Yeah, that was uh, that was my Nissan. Twin turbo. Yeah. Uh, was it a twin turbo? Yeah, that thing was fast. I don't remember. You see, here's what happened. I, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I've never been a guy who cared about what kind of car I had. Just never a- appealed to me. Uh, I, I bought a car. My father always taught me, you've got a car for one thing and one thing only, and that's for transportation. And if it's good enough to get you from point A to point B, that's all that matters. Meanwhile, kids around me are going, oh, I want a sports car, and I want this, and I want that. Well, I, I had a, uh, what was I had? I had a Mazda, right? I remember your RX-7. And Well, no, before that, just a regular Mazda sedan. Oh, okay. And then I saw the RX-7, and I kind of liked it because it had that Wankel engine. You remember the Wankel engine? It was a rotary engine. The rotary engine. Yeah. Had different sound to it and everything. And uh, I think that was a pretty good idea. It was a whole new concept in, in engines. It, it it only had one cylinder or something, and it it, it rotated, and it... Um, very few moving parts. Very few moving parts. Supposedly a superior car, and I, I really... I can't say I had any real trouble with the engine in that car. And uh, so I owned that RX-7 for, ooh, God, maybe, what, a couple of years? Larry, you, you know better than I do. You know my life better I than I do. I remember I did your first show in... Uh, 1983, and I remember you gave me a ride home in that one. So mm-hmm. you had it in '83. Yeah, was it a t- was it a four seater or was that a two seater? The R. It was a two seater. Two seater. Uh, and I figured I never needed more than a two seater for anything because I, I I was unsociable. Anyway, so <laughs> so you practice social distancing before it was popular. So then I decide, you know, it's time to buy a new car. All right. So my my business manager and I go into the Nissan dealership and I see this beautiful car and they said that's uh, that's a um, uh, what do they call it uh, what did you call it a minute ago the 300ZX 300ZX then I said uh, how much and they said well this one is uh, is a is a floor model so we'll give you some money off on it $33,000 uh, which was pretty high in the day Okay. At the time, yeah. Mm-hmm. And my business manager says, well, now we're not going to pay that. He says, well, let me go talk to my manager and see if what kind of deal I can make for you. And he comes back and he says, how's 32000 And he said, my business manager says, nah, that's unacceptable. He said, well, what would be acceptable to you? I'll take it back to my manager. He said, $3.75. <laughs> And the guy says, he starts laughing. He says, what are you laughing about? You said you could take it back to your manager. Go tell him $3.75. So he goes back. And he comes back. He says, well, no way that's happening. And he said, my business manager said, no way this is happening either. Come on, Alex. And we start walking out. And I said, but come on, I want that car. I want that car. He says, just don't worry. He says, by the time my, door, my hand hits the door, he's going to make us a better offer. <laughs> And then sure enough, the minute our hand hit the door, the guy said, Wait a minute. And we got it for twenty eight thousand. So twenty eight, wow. Yeah, yeah. And so I had this sports car. I mean, and one that people, you know, took notice of. 
And I didn't care. I just wanted a car to get me from point A to point B. But now I've got guys giving me the OK sign as I drive by. <laughs> and I suddenly realize I've got a absolute beast on my hands here, you know. And uh, we, um, you know, I had that thing for years and years and years and years and years. And I finally sold it when I came to New York. Um, sold it for cash, actually. And I think somebody got a really good bargain out. I think I sold to him for ten grand or something like that. But uh, anyway, so it was uh, it was a um, uh, that was my big my big sports car, period. Well, what was your first car? My first car was well, actually, <laughs> uh, it was a. Are you ready for this? A. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, I'm trying to remember the brand. It was a, bu a, no, a tor it was called a torpedo. Uh, uh, I think it was either I seem to remember Pontiac maybe or something torpedo. Anyway, it was a uh, might have been. I think I might have been an Oldsmobile. It, it, no, no, it was a 19. I think it was a 1939 Pontiac torpedo. I think if okay. I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay. So that was an old car. Yeah, but I the reason I bought it is this guy I knew owned it, and he got laid a lot, and I had never had sex yet. So I figured if I bought it, I would get laid too. So I bought it from him, and it was a Pontiac Torpedo, and it, it didn't last very long, but it was, it was for its day, it was a, a streamlined car, but people <laughs> tried to paint it with spray paint and things like that to make it... <laughs> Looked newer and it was it was pretty funky, and then I I downgraded to a uh, uh, to I think something like a 1937 car that was very boxy, you know, uh, and then what did, what, what did I get after that? Oh, then I got a Ford. I, I upgraded to a, like a 51 Ford, um, and that was a good little car. That was a really mm -hmm. good little car. And then at some point, um, I was in the Navy. I, or I'd just come out of the Navy, so I needed a car. And the Mustangs had just come out the year before. And so I got a second-year Mustang, uh, brand new. And it was. It was. That was a terrific car. What an, was a great what car, an idea yeah. that was, you know. Um, uh because what it did is it, it completely turned the whole way you thought about cars and other cars had to adapt to it. Like one of the things it had was um, in, interior rugs. You know, before you used to go out and buy these rubber mats you'd put on the floor on what was essentially a metal floor and you didn't have carpeting in the car and this had carpeting. That's what I remember most about it. But it also was a sports car, but and it didn't have a it did have a back seat, I think, but very. Quick. That was the big thing because people the two seater cars were very limited to the number of people that could sell to by putting that small rear seat in that opened up a huge market to Ford. Right, right, and uh, you know the big car up until that point when it came to sports cars <clears throat> was uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Thunderbird Corvette, the, uh, and the Corvette and the Thunderbird. And Ford had nothing, okay? And so this thing represented, I think it was originally sold as a sports car, wasn't it? It was, yes. It, yeah. Uh, introduced at the New York World's Fair in 1964. Yeah, the Ford. Ford had the Thunderbird, right? Ford and had the Thunderbird, Corvette and that was, came out in 55. Corvette was Chevrolet. Uh, and it, it was, wow, what a car. What a car. Now, I'm yeah. going to, you want me to... See, now, I'm not a big car guy, okay, but I do remember certain cars that came out in my lifetime that were significant. Do you ever remember the Kaiser Darren? No. I've heard of, I heard. I know the Kaiser made a car. but Yeah, it was the Kaiser Darren, and it had, like, lips on the front of it. It looked like lips. Uh, just like later on, uh, the Edsel came out and looked like a vagina. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Their slogan was, if our car doesn't kill you, our surgeons will. <laughs> you no, know, well, the thing was, with the, with the Edsel, 
It had come out when uh, uh, S.I. Hayakawa, who was then a professor at the uh, at San Francisco State College, had written a treatise called "Sexual Symbolism in the American Automobile." And it was all about how the car had certain elements to it that were very sexual. So uh, the people at Ford took this to heart and said, let's put a grill in that looks like a vagina. <laughs> and they did. It looks just like a vagina. It, it, I don't know of any other shape in nature that looks like what they put on the front of an Edsel except a vagina. <laughs> so, the biggest flop in automotive history. And it wasn't 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 a bad car. It had good ideas behind it, but it just didn't capture the imagination of the American public. They had to, they you could shift gears by buttons on the steering wheel. You had the push button transmission, yeah. Yeah, push button transmission, and uh, uh, you know I didn't think it was that bad a car. And finally, I think in its third year, when it wasn't selling too well, they decided to change the nature of the of the beast, as it were, and uh, they did away with the grill, and they just made it into a standard sedan, and that even sold less. Yeah, that was it, the last year, 58 to 60. And they, they gave up on it. And I, it, it, the word Edsel always is the same as the word uh, flop. Yeah. You know? And uh, it, it's it was kind of I think it was kind of sad because it wasn't a bad automobile it just it just didn't appeal to the public. No, and they had done, that had done they'd done the most uh, what they call that pre marketing or something and did, did uh, surveys and questionnaires and they did so much research they thought it was going to be such a huge hit and it just failed miserably. Yeah, and then of course you remember the Studebaker. Studebaker, yeah, made some great looking cars in the fifties. Well, my father used to describe it as it looked the same way coming at you that it looked backing up. Because <laughs> really, the front and the back were pretty much symmetrical. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there was the Studebaker. And the first, the biggest car my father ever bought that I remember was a Hudson. Oh, they called those, uh, they look like bathtubs. You step down into them. Mm -hmm. In other words, when there was a, there was the, you opened the door, and instead of going up as you did in most cars, there was a little rise. This one, you stepped down into, and that was their big, big deal. And they even had a head ornament that lit up, if I remember correctly. The front of the car had an oh, that'd be cool. ornament that lit up. And my father, <laughs> my father great. loved that car. The Hudson wasn't a bad car, but the all these cars disappeared. They just. You know, all of a sudden, they just kind of slowly fell by the wayside. So we don't have Studebakers today. We don't have Nashes. Remember the Nash? Wow, what a terrible automobile that was. Hudson, is that, yeah, they got Nash. They got bought up by Rambler and then American Motors. And yeah, yeah. So Nash and uh, Studebaker and Hudson. Packard. And Packard. Yeah, Packard was a separate company, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm hmm Wow. Kaiser for a few years. Kaiser with the Kaiser Darren. And I think they had some other cars, too, if I'm not mistaken. And the ill-fated Tucker. Oh, the Tucker. There's a whole movie about that one. Yeah. The guy only made, they only wound up making, I think, 55 of them, and 53 are still working. Yeah, they're worth a lot of money. What he did, folks, in case you don't know, he built headlights that when you turn the corner, the headlights moved to the side a little bit. In other words, yeah, wherever the, you were the going... Yeah, had a bunch of safety features, too, but that headlight, yeah, it was a great idea. And it came with seatbelts. Uh -huh. It was the first, first car, car with seatbelts, and it, it and somehow they, uh, the big motor companies went to Washington, and he, oh, I think he was put on trial, wasn't he, at one point? He was put on trial because they thought he had defrauded investors and... Uh, I remember the movie made it look like the big three had conspired. To yeah, and they said you haven't made any of them. So finally he got it, all the ones he had, which were 55 of them, and they paraded in front of the courthouse Yeah, uh, <laughs> to prove that, yes, we did make these damn things. And they did, you know. Uh, but it was the, it, it, all the things he put into that car later were adapted were adopted by the major, major companies. Right. You know, with good reason. With good reason, really terrific, uh, interesting car, interesting story.
about the guy. And that was he, a Coppola, that was a Coppola movie. Yeah, it was because Coppola owned one. That's why he did the movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So one of the cars in that film was his car. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Larry. I want you to stay safe. Don't get oh, the don't get the big virus. Oh yeah, I'm I'm social distancing, six hundred feet. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we love him. He's from California, where I wish I was right now, but I wouldn't dare get on an airplane. Uh, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alec. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's our big opening. See, that's our big opening. Our big COVID-19 opening. Anyway, hi, how are you? You doing okay tonight? Good. I'm glad you're doing okay tonight because the rest of the world isn't. Oh, no, I don't want that. I always do. I, I keep screwing stuff up, and I don't understand why. Here's what I wanted to go to. See, there. There's the map, Okay. Notice that number? Notice that one right there? Yeah, see where my arrow is there? See that? The world went over 5 million. In fact, 5,101,967 with 332,900 deaths going on 333,000 deaths. Well, oh boy. Hmm. That's not good. That's not good at all. Let's go to the U. Let's go to the U.S. here. Okay, the U.S. We've got one thousand, one million. Excuse me, one thousand. I wish it were one thousand. One million five hundred seventy-seven thousand one hundred and forty, with ninety-four thousand seven hundred and two deaths. We're going on ninety-five thousand deaths, and um, uh, I uh, let's let's emphasize that, folks. There's the number right there. Uh, and uh, uh, I guess within the next couple of days, we should be hitting 100,000 people who died as a result of it. They're not dying in New York City, though, uh, as a matter of fact, because today we had only, what was it, 100 and, I think it was 102 deaths. Uh, only, and 30 of them were in um, nursing homes. The rest were in... Uh, the uh, in in hospitals, and I think that amounts to if we take thirty away from uh, something like this, something like seventy seven people died in hospitals, uh, and and that is not bad if you consider that we have over thirty hospitals in the New York state system, so that's an average of about. Oh, maybe three deaths a day or something like that. Something, something ridiculously low. Russia's coming back is is now the second highest in the world. They're really burning it up now um, with three hundred seventeen thousand five hundred fifty-four uh, deaths, uh, not deaths, but uh, uh, cases with three thousand ninety-nine deaths. 
Brazil now is in the number three spot. It's the new hot spot, by the way. They have 310,087 total confirmed, 20,047 dead. I'm trying to figure out what percentage it is of that. But it, it's maybe the highest per uh, 100,000 in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the world at this point, I think. But it's getting to be a real hot spot. And the, uh, the, the president down there refuses to say it's anything worse than, the, it's not worse than the common cold. It's no different than a common flu is what he says. And people are just dying like crazy because what they got down there in, uh, in Brazil is they have this thing called favelas, okay? And favelas are where the very poor people live and they live in very crowded conditions, uh, sometimes six to a room, okay? If you ever saw the movie, um, what was it, Black Orpheus, uh, the, that, that picture took place in the favelas. They're a very poor area in, uh, in uh, Brazil, in um, uh, uh, Rio de Janeiro. And it, they're tightly packed. It's, it's terrible. And that's where the death is coming from. It seems this death, this particular disease is especially affecting not only old people, which we were talking about before, but also just poor people, people who are living in closed conditions, right? So uh, that's, that's what that is all about. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Let me get the, um, let me get the, uh, uh, the Skype going. Let me see here. Here it is. There it goes. Oh, boy. The lights seem a little bright tonight. I don't know why. Should I turn the lights down a little bit here? Let me see here. Let me see if I can just turn them down just a tad. Just so I don't, they don't seem as bright to me. Okay, there we go. And I still got a, there's still a good picture of me, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. That's fine. Okay, I'm opening up the, uh, the Skype lines now. Let me get my uh, thing active here. And we'll be ready to start taking your calls. But that's what's happening here in New York. Uh, the uh, the innovations are down. The uh, We are down to the amount of people being admitted to the hospitals now uh, are down to the level they were when this whole thing began. I mean, not at zero. That's where it began. But uh, the first couple of days into this, uh, we're back down around that level. I think it's only something like 400 a day or something like that. Okay, wait a minute. Here comes our first caller, ladies and gentlemen, and it is, uh, let me see here. Let me get him uh, in here so that we have him. I get oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, I tell you, I won't put you in the first place. I'll tell you why, because, well, wait a minute. Well, Brian Neary will add him. Okay, we'll put you in the top spot, Phil. Why? Huh? Why? Why? Uh, why? Uh, because I owe it to you. Uh, let me see here. Okay. All right. And then number two spot, we got to put in, oh, we got Rob Alfano calling. Number two spot, we're going to put in Brian Neary. Okay. Looks like Brian's in his garage. Uh, okay. Brian Neary. And then uh, let's see here. The number three spot, uh, Rob Alfano. We'll put Rob Alfano. There we go. Okay. And then in the number, let me see here, so you can see, well, let's see here, the number four spot, uh, we've got, uh, uh, who do we have in the number four spot? Uh, oh, let, let's put Charlie Wallace in the fourth spot. Oh, sure. boy, everybody's, everybody's calling really fast. Everybody slow down. <laughs> You're driving me nuts here. Okay, there we go. Let me see here. There's Charlie. There's um, uh, Zeller and 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 uh, Josh Wheeler is calling, so we'll put him in the number six spot. Okay, let me see here. Uh, okay, let me see here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, well, Zeller, who who am I? Who am I trying to? Uh, uh, hold on a second. Uh, we have to find uh, um, Josh. Where are we? Are you there, Josh? Yeah. I'm here. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, Josh, there we go. Okay, and then uh, let me do this. 
Okay, then I got to answer Kevin, and uh, I'll put him in the, the number seven spot. Um, let me see here. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Uh, he would be, uh, he would be, um, uh, oh, man, I have to cancel here. Let's see, um, let me see here. What, what, where are we? What, what, um, wait a minute, number six, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on a second. Number six should be Josh, but unfortunately it didn't grab, so let me put it back in here. Josh, where, where, oh, wait a minute. Oh, there, there we go, because Rob was right there in that place. Okay, then we go, and finally uh, we got to put in Kevin. He is going to be in the number seven spot. He would be Hog Rider. Oh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Cog Rider. There he is. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. We're all cool, right? So you guys are talking about cars. You and Bubs. We're talking about cars. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. This is my 1934 Cadillac I'm building. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait a minute. This, nobody, this nobody else talks, so he can talk, and I can get his picture there, <laughs> so that we can okay. show him. Okay. Oh, Oops. Okay. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that is my 1957 Cadillac, and that's chopped and airbagged, all white walls and everything. Wow. That's the, uh, this is a 1934 Cadillac I'm working on right now. It's a convertible <laughs> Speedster. Very, very rare. Uh, I, be, I bet. Yeah. <clears throat> you think about this car historically, you know, this is during the Depression, and this was a coupe, and it has the the, uh, the golf club door so, um, <laughs> side. So whoever owned this was very, very rich because they had this as a second car, you know, back then, and to have money was pretty crazy. Wow. Yeah, so this is, if I can, oh, yeah. So it's all pearl white interior. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That's all. And then Studebaker, these are actually Studebaker fins that I put over. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We lost, we lost you. We lost him because he, uh, I guess the garage is not the best signal he's got in the whole house. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so I got these two, and then I have a 1985 Mercedes. Oh, gee. Uh, it's all Euro package and everything that I'm, that I'm sort of restoring. And you don't so. sell these things? Uh, I sold... This one right here. Let's see, yeah, I sold that one. That was the 1940 LaSalle Cadillac LaSalle. Oh wow! Yeah, I sold that one about three. By the way, years. by the way, LaSalle is the word nobody understands in the theme from All in the Family. Family. And yeah. boy, our LaSalle ran great. Yeah. Yeah. And then you see, these are all my trophies from <laughs> from all the shows. Really, really, yeah, son of I'm, a bitch calendars and both of the cars and then uh, like even like root beer bottles it's pretty crazy yeah the cars get a personality well we just lost him again he, he's in a kind of sketchy space for his uh, his wi-fi <laughs> you guys are talking about cars and pubs so i had to show you okay that, 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 that's wonderful well, if you had a Kaiser Darren, I would say you were on the you were t <laughs> talking about the same stuff the rest of us were talking about. Yeah. You okay. I'll, I'll do it with you guys in a minute. Let me go. Through. Okay. He's going to go back inside, and uh, let me see here. Hold on a second. I got. I got to. I'm trying to get out of something here, and I have more trouble. Um. There we go. All right. Okay. Now I'm all right. Okay. Anyway, how y'all doing tonight? Good. Okay, good. By the way, I, uh, I, I, have, I have something I want to apologize for. I want to apologize to Phil because last night I went back and looked at the show and I, I went off the handle on you, Phil. And while you deserve anything I give you, I, you didn't deserve that. So I apologize for that. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure I did something to cause you to <laughs> get up. Oh, continually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on a constant basis, but you know, you did, I, I, I just, I really, I really, I, I flew off the handle on that one. I could have handled it better. Let me put it that way. 
you know, it, it, it happens, and we could all do things better. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it it doesn't matter. Thank you for mentioning that. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the yeah. last thing I want to do is cause you any aggravation either. Well, don't you dare ever again. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, now, what? Uh, Brian, do you have a uh, one of the Crystal Awards from uh, John? The Agostino? No, not yet. Uh, I'll get it with the 34. <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to go to dinner with oh, yeah. soon, and I'm going to tell him, hey, you know, you, you got to consider the Crystal Award for Brian. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah, we have a mutual friend that's really, really big. Okay. Uh, you're going to have to turn your audio off there, Ray, until you want to talk because it's a little uh, noisy out there. Let me give you a spot here, though. Let me see here. Uh, number seven, yeah, let me see. Uh, eight, uh, nine. That's what I want. Uh, is Ray Renati uh, Gumball? Gumball? There he is. Gumba, Goomba. Goomba. There we go. Okay. He's, uh, he's out and about and <laughs> walking the dog. Oh, look at the little dog. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 so you, you do sell those cars, right? I mean, you don't. Yeah, the gold one's tough for me to sell because I've had that one for so long. Mm -hmm. But I've had, I finished that one two thousand seven. So yeah, that one's been around for a long now time. You take those and things the, out. You take those things out for a ride. Yes, I drive them. So I dri I've driven the gold one to L.A. probably about ten or eleven times to different shows down there. Mm -hmm. And then the the red one you saw the LaSalle. Yeah. That one about seven or eight times. No trailers. I'll trailers. bet you I get. I bet you get. A lot of um, a, a lot of stairs and a lot of these high fives and circles and yeah. And then we're driving and it's nice and cruising. And then all of a sudden, someone comes up right next to me and honks the horn. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. Oh boy. Okay, here comes John How long Larkin. Does it take you to build one of those. Brian also rides on the weekends and uh, he gets together with what a hundred people with classic cars and they go for a. A, a ride yeah. in the air. Yeah, we had these safe cruises going on Saturday mornings. Yeah, we had almost 100 cars last week. Pretty crazy. Probably. Sing. Is anybody? Did anybody sing Edith Bunker singing? No, that no, that's a, that's what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh. Was, yeah, our LaSalle ran great. Those she were the days. Yeah, wrote LaSalle ran great. <laughs> yeah, those were the days. <laughs> were you asking about? Oh. Ask I don't remember that. I, I asked how long it yep. takes to, like, for that Cadillac that you're building now. How long will it take you to get it to where the other cars are? Uh, hmm? uh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 how, how long will it take that you to get? He, he wants to know how long oh, will it take you, you get that my car? Sister, yeah. yeah, my system was freezing. The, the gold one, since that was my first custom, I built some other cars before, but that was about seven years. And then the LaSalle was about four years. This one's about seven years. No, this will be this is about five years so far with the, the 34 Cadillac. But that's everything. That's that's redoing the frame, all suspension. When you get into the 30s and 40s cars, you really have to change everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cool. That, I, that's very cool. You know, and, I, and I'm, not, as I said earlier to, to Bubs, uh, I, I'm not a big car fan, okay? Uh, you know, I, I didn't, uh, but I... You know, I, I could appreciate a car like that. I can appreciate that. Yeah, they're uh, fun. Yeah, so um, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Is this a Royal Flush, Phil? You're the one who's the keeper. Uh, 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 three, seven, eleven. Yeah. 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 Well, eleven with me. Yeah. No more calls, please, folks. Please, because we find that when we and I really should redo this page uh, when we get the other two that I could put down. Over, over there, <laughs> okay. Uh, over there, uh, it just uh, we have uh, we, we it becomes a, a real problem. Certain people start blanking out and so on. Um, and again, it's so funny because you were like four months ago. You're ready to cut everything. Nobody's calling. I'm stopping the program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're getting a lot of people. Wa we're getting a lot of people watching. You know, uh, it's amazing, actually, to tell you the damn truth. The uh, virus has hmm? been good for GabNet. The virus has been very good for GabNet, yeah. 
people need something to do, and God damn it, if this isn't what they what they've decided to do, so you know, uh, it's it's good. How you doing, Josh? Good. How you doing? What's new in your part of the woods? Not a whole lot. They still got make day off this week. You what? You're off this week. Got an extra day off, so. Oh, I call see. Two nights instead of one. Oh, okay. Why? Why'd you get an extra night off this week? I took tomorrow off. Oh, you just you just wanted to have the time off. I got to use it sometime. I certainly don't give yeah. it back. Uh, hey, hmm? I know so many people that do. It's like really, um, you get your back um, your vacation. That's like taking gonna, a vacation. Uh, if if you work somewhere and you don't use your vacation and you give it back to them, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the good old days were gone. They let me build up my uh, vacation days, so I was able to retire six months early. Well, re- really? Yeah. I don't do that anymore? Yeah. They don't pay you for the vacation days you don't use? No, not, not a lot of companies. You don't use it, you oh. lose it. If you don't yeah. use them, you lose them. And you're you're supposed to take it off, and if you don't, then, mm-hmm. like I said, you're an idiot. I mean, if you want to work for free, I'm giving away money. Yeah. I, I say yeah. it to people all the time. It's Not like really into that. And me, you know, a couple of hundred bucks or whatever it is that you make a day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't take my vacations as much as I should have when I was at Sirius XM. And, and really, you're right. I mean, you should take all the vacations that are due you. Absolutely. I'm off vacation next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Staycation, actually. A staycation. I'm, well, we yeah. know where to go. Absolutely. I remember, yeah. Hamill, you didn't like to take vacations because you didn't uh, want the interruption to the show. You, you were more interested in the quality of the show than you were in the vacation. Well, I also, you know, I was... Uh, how can I put this? I was very protective of that show. Yeah. And so I'd have to leave it in the hands of somebody else. No and the, best of, huh? And, and, no. Oh. Well, <clears throat> I, you know, um, nah, best of, and a morning show, best of don't work that well because they need to be kind of day and date. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Right? And that's when you trained me to be there after you left also so that I could help out the people that took over the show uh for in that in those mornings yeah yeah uh, yeah but i i i um uh when i finally did do it i who do i who do i have all oh, you know i bring people in uh, that i knew uh, uh to do it and um you know I, I was i was happy with most of the people who took over for me uh but uh there was a black guy and a woman uh, <coughs> what uh, 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 the guy who came on after you Mm-hmm. Uh, a tall, tall black guy, very uh, Tony Kilbert. Right. How nice. do I remember that name? Yeah, good guy. Yeah, great and, guy. Uh, he uh, filled in, and mm-hmm. then a, a woman, I, a little on the heavier set side. I don't remember her name. Uh, that I don't remember, but somehow mm-hmm. I remember Tony Kilbert. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah. But anyway, well, let's not talk about stuff people don't don't know about. Um, how uh, let's see here. How how you doing, Patrick? How's uh, how how's the is the, is the coronavirus staying away from your door? Yeah, it, 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 everything fine around here. Um, I think Sunday uh, we had a day without any um, any deaths or actually any um, any people going into hospital. So <coughs> our curve, I would say, is pretty much flattened and uh, the opening up of some of the stuff didn't cause any big problems so well as long as you do it in a in a in a metered way you know and don't just you know suddenly go okay everybody party up vomit in each other's mouths you know whatever um it is it is everything open but um Businesses are opening at their own pace, and they're deciding how they want to do things, which yeah. is what I've always felt would happen anyway, is that I, I always thought that that portion was overblown by people, that if we say, okay, everything's open, mm-hmm. that it's going to be like the Patriots won the uh, Super Bowl and everybody's going to run outside. And that's not the case. It didn't happen here. 
uh, businesses are still closed, some of them. Other ones are open. Mm -hmm. Others are allowing five people in at a time. You know, it, it, it's better. So um, people are smarter than I think the government gives them credit. Well, well, let me ask you this question, though. Even at its height, how bad was it for you guys there in Wisconsin? Not bad. Not I, bad. I think, yeah. I think you had asked me um, a month or two ago, and, and I think at that time we had just over 300 people in the hospital at any particular time. Mm -hmm. And the number of deaths here... I don't know, I think... Well, new, like, new admissions to the hospital here today, on, according to Cuomo's count today, uh, were 400. But you got to realize, that's in the entire state of New York, which has a total population of what? Does anybody know? What, I know, the, I think the population of New York State is about 16 million. million. Huh? I thought it was 19. 19 million? Okay. Yeah, so right. when you compare it, to a lot of other states, which are seeing a, a jump up, and they see 400 new cases a day in those states, we're doing very well now, you know. And as I said, if you were to say how many people are in hospital died in hospitals in the last day, it only amounts to an average of about um, what uh, three per hospital, maybe. You know, that's not bad, not compared to what it was. You know, so we've managed to really flatten the curve. We're right back almost where we were at the very beginning, but we don't want to see that go back up again, and so we're being very careful about it. Um, but they have, the, the, the hardest part they've had, I think, the most monumental task that they have engaged in is sanitizing the subways. Every night from... What is it? Is it the one o'clock in the morning until four, five o'clock in the morning? They have people down in the subways disinfecting every car. Now you got to realize how many trains there are in this subway system, and they now have a new thing they have where it's a it fits on some of the posts where you kind of hold on to the you know when you when the train is really full and you want to hold on. They've put up these things that are um, um, ultraviolet light that blast the train when it's not filled with people full of ultraviolet rays to kill the, you know, the virus that's there. And now the latest thing that they've found, you know, we learned something. It's funny. Uh, 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 Phil's favorite guy, Cuomo, today was saying... The thing about this whole story is we learn something every day. Something we assumed yesterday was true isn't true today. You know, we, we first we believed that kids couldn't get the virus, right? Or that it wouldn't affect them badly. And then all of a sudden we're finding they're dying of it because of complications from the virus. Um, and and there are just a lot of different things that... That change, and one of them that changes is they found out today that things do not stick onto surfaces. The virus does not stick onto surfaces quite as badly as we thought once thought it did. Like uh, we say, like spray or your paper cartons that you get from like Amazon with antibacterial. Oh. That maybe they don't really cling to that. So there are these new things we're learning about it, and and so on, and. Um, who knows? But how about this? I yeah. was talking to my wife about this tonight. Yeah. You're walking down the city street, mm -hmm. people walking in front of you. Mm -hmm. You've got your mask on. Mm -hmm. And somebody in front of you sneezes. And you're, you know, those droplets hang in the air. Yeah. So, all right, but you've got your mask on, but your eyes are open. Yeah. The, the mask don't do anything for you. It protects the other people. See, if that person sneezed... But let's say you had a mask on, you wouldn't have to work. I, well, I mean, like, if you had a well, face guard. And I'm talking about, like, congestion areas like New York City or places. Not, yeah. you know, I live. Yeah. But if you're walking down the street of the city and somebody spews and they've got it and they sneeze or cough a lot and there are droplets in the air, 
presumably those droplets, you could walk by and you could be blinking and they could get in your yeah. eye. You can become infected. Yeah, walk the other way. <laughs> That's why you shelter in place. Yeah, well, uh, the, the, you know, the idea of wearing the mask is you're wearing the mask to protect somebody else. And he's wearing his mask to protect you. And so, consequently, those two things... And then if you keep the, the social distance, which I argue that six feet is, a, is enough. <laughs> you know, I think it should be more like 12 feet. It probably should be one half a city block, so far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, you know, those things are... Uh, the, the, those various things. And then washing your hands and all the other things that we talk about, those main... Those little minor things we talked about in the beginning, the five different points of things you should be doing, you do those and you're, you're protecting yourself against it, you know. By the way, you know what they found out? They thought that the people here in New York City, who would you think was most uh, uh, subject to getting the virus? Anybody have a guess, Phil? Want to guess? Uh, cops and uh, frontline uh People that's, like firemen. That's what you would have thought, right? EMTs, hospital yeah. workers, yeah. people like that. No, they have a very they when they finally did the the tests, they found they had a very low rate of infection. Because the reason why they have a low rate of infection is they were wearing the masks, they were wearing the gloves. You know where they found the greatest amount of infection was? People who stayed at home. Oh yeah, huh? and they didn't have yeah. any antibodies. You know, I, I mean, e at least if you're out, that wasn't out. it. The reason is, if, uh, I know if Rob went what? Uh, it, they said that really amazed them uh, that the most uh, people they found that were infected were people who were staying at home. But they do go out occasionally. They go to the store or whatever. So the people who were taking precautions about staying in place, and then also. You got to realize, I live in an apartment. I live in an apartment with somebody else. If Marjorie goes out, she somehow gets it and comes home. Then I'm going to get it from her. No matter, you know, it's tough. Yeah, they didn't think they were going to find it among the stay-at-home population as large as they were going to find it in uh, the uh, the workers. You know, and the tr truth of the matter was that those people. I think among police, there was something like it was like 9% or something had the virus, uh, as opposed to the general population, which was much higher. Uh, firemen, EMTs, all very not what they thought it was going to be. So, you know, you know, all I'm saying is whatever you think is going to be the truth today may not be the truth tomorrow because you're, this is an ever evolving learning process. Yes, Ray. Uh, yeah, I, um, early on, my wife was extremely ill, and I have a really nerdy son, and he knew about this thing happening in China, and there were like just one or two cases in California, and so uh, we locked, we basically, my wife stayed in the bedroom for two weeks by herself, um, and I, she had all the symptoms, but none of us got sick. But, yeah, if we hadn't done that, I think we all would have gotten it. Did she go get the test? Did she go, go get uh, a test? No, no there, there, um, we didn't even know there was a test at that time. It was, like, uh, it was really, really early, you know. It'd be interesting uh, if she got the test now to see if she had it. If, if, she, the had the, if she has still the antibodies. Yeah, I know. I know. I really, she, it's, it's hard to get that test, you know, the uh, antibody test. For a regular person. Yeah, but, but you know, you know what, what's also true is maybe you did get it. I might have, right. Well, yeah, but it was such as, have. but you I got what we would call an inoculative. Am I, am I right? Could I call it, an, uh, Brian, an inoculative form of it in which you live yeah. with somebody who has it and you get it, but just a little bit, but enough? Very, very small. Yeah. But, yeah, that's that's what I was saying with the uh, with the people who were staying at home and they got it. Uh, but maybe the people that were living with them, like Alex says, were out uh, and carried it, and then somebody at home uh, actually got sick. Yeah. Uh, when I was uh, today, she was really hmm? ill. She uh, she had all the symptoms: coughing and chest pain, and we just thought it was a really bad flu. But 
She might. It might have been the flu. Who knows, right? But, I. Uh, it sounds to me like she, she had prob- a flu shot. It sounds to me if she had a flu shot and then she still got those symptoms and it probably was COVID. Yeah. No, because uh, sometimes maybe maybe not. Who knows? The flu yeah. might protect against four. The flu shot might protect against, let's say, four flus, but there might be eight flus out there, and if if the one you that's get true. has yeah. to be that shot, yeah. usually, you know, usually though, Phil, what they shoot, what they they inoculate you against is the most common, and they yeah. say that if you have the flu shot, what's good about that is if you then get this, it, chances are pretty good you got the COVID. Yeah, you know? although Ray's wife worked at a gym. And, you know, when you're working in a gym, sometimes you're in closer proximity. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. To people. Yeah, yeah. She worked at the gym every day. Yeah. Well, you not touch all the surfaces at the gym. Yeah. Every day she worked there. But really close to a lot of people who were breathing hard. Yeah. 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 And sweating and doing all sorts of other stuff. So the chances of, you know, catching something are greater. Although it's not, it shouldn't be. can't catch you from sweat. It's a respiratory thing, right? Yeah, it's a respiratory. I think when people are breathing hard and droplets are coming out more, there's just a higher chance. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Apparently, that's why they say like if you're riding a bike or something, there's a lot of people. John, you should wear a mask. John, you worked as a uh, as an usher in a movie theater, right? No, no. Um, the theater, you know, music theater, like oh. we're, you know, like a nightclub. Oh, I see. Okay, but that like the Orpheum and the Golden Gate and the Warfield. Right. So you worked at places like that, and uh, you you could have gotten it. You know. Yeah. You're lucky you didn't. They closed them down pretty pretty quickly, though. You know, I mean, um, I I guess they closed them like right about the same time the the sports stuff got all closed. So. Yeah. You know, I yeah I could have got it. Yeah, I'm lucky. Uh, you know, I got tested though last weekend. I got I got a test and um, it's free and I'm negative, so that's good. Well, Marjorie has to be tested because she's getting a, a shot in her spine that she gets every now and then for the pain that I know. <laughs> Patrick's giving me that ouch look. Um, yeah. uh, did you ever have a spinal? Well, no, you don't need them. You have an automatic spinal, right, Patrick? I mean, basically, because I got a spinal when I when I got this, you know, the, the seeds put in me, and um, uh, that didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. I thought it was going to kill me. I'd rather hurt go me. to spinal surgery than even risk getting an epidural. So don't they give pregnant women epidurals during uh, during pregnancy? They don't seem to. Come yeah. Out. Yeah. They're under so much pain that they're looking for relief. Yeah. Well, that's the whole idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That pain's nothing compared to contractions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, what happened was is um, what was I going to say? I, I, I geez, so I had something I wanted to say, and I, my my mind completely forgot. About surgery, getting the oh, she had yeah, she has to go get because she's getting this uh, spinal thing. She's getting this shot in her spine. They put her out for it, but they want her to get the COVID test. Mm-hmm. Just to make sure she doesn't have COVID. So at least I will know whether I have COVID or not because if she has it, you know. But I don't, she, I, she's not going to have it. I, I seriously doubt it, you know. Um, I'm not getting it because they say the reason to get it is if you have symptoms. Right now, they don't want people who don't have symptoms to go get it because why? You know, and you're just taking up the t- time and the test that somebody else could use that truly feels they might might have it. So, you know. Yeah, I'm kind of a hypochondriac. I, I, I thought I might have had it, but I think it just turned out to be indigestion, indigestion, you know. <laughs> well, <there's... laughs> well uh, try living where take I do. Where... What? Go, go... Yes, Charlie. I said take a tongue. Yeah. yeah Tums. Well, the problem that I have myself is that I have al- I'm I'm a big allergy guy, and it's allergy season. And guess what? Some of the symptoms are wheezing, sneezing, coughing, yeah. whatever. Uh, but I know I know the difference between that and uh, you know 
COVID. All of those things are Santa's reindeer. Yes, uh, yes, right. Yeah. Coughing, yeah. wheezing. Yeah. Yes, uh, Kevin. <laughs> Just notice you got two uh, Johns and no Patrick on your YouTube. Oh, really? Oh, boy. Thank you. Thank you for Sorry. telling me yeah. that. I know. I, let's see here. The John's in the eighth no. place. Okay, he's in the eighth place, so I got to get in the eighth place, and I got to get uh, Darth Pat. Where's Didn't Darth mean to throw Pat? It off track or no, thank you very much. I appreciate it because sometimes I don't see it. There we go. Okay, there's Pat. Now we have everybody. Hank, we should. Andreas, how was Patrick's dad? Uh, I don't know if anybody is aware, but he had a, a, a bout with a was it a tumor, Patrick? Uh. He originally diagnosed him with an aneurysm, mm -hmm. but it turned out to be a, a benign tumor. Mm -hmm. So uh, he just meets with a neurosurgeon to see if it needs to be removed or just to watch it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, not really Good. concerned about it anymore. Good. How do you get a brain tumor? That's my question. You know. Just happens. It's all uh, it just thing. happens, right? It is bad. My my uh, assistant at work got one, and it was terrible over several years, and it just beat her to death. Really? I mean, she finally died as a result of it. Yes, she did. Oh, well. They couldn't operate. It was Iraq. It went over. It, it would. It happened over probably the last five years of her life. Maybe six or no, I think it was about six or so. It would go away and then come back and go away and come back. And well, I always thought you could operate on anything. Okay, yeah, uh, well, uh, Jeff. Can. Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was going to say I I had a, a bleeder, so to speak. A what? And I, I had a brain surgery problem. Yeah. Yeah, from a stroke. Oh, from the stroke. Oh, yeah. you, but did you have the brain surgery and then it caused the stroke? That's what happened. No, the stroke came first. Uh huh. And then uh, I had the surgery as a way to, uh, to mitigate it. Okay. All right. Okay. And, uh, you know, that was an interesting choice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but what caused but Something caused your stroke, though, didn't it? Some medication you were taking or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, because of my heart stuff, I always I had a mechanical valve, and I had to take Coumadin, mm -hmm. which is okay. a thinning um, drug. Yeah. That uh, once in a while it uh, reacts. Yeah. Overreacts. Yeah. I uh, it, I had a. I had to take that for six months, and I hated it, and it, I couldn't wait to get off it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think they gave me Plavix. Plavix? Yeah. Plavix. <laughs> it's one of the Jerry Lewis. Phil, uh, so what about Plavix? this? Plavix. What about the brain surgery you had and replaced it with this brain you have now? The Trump <laughs> brain. Uh, no, no. They, I was the, uh, t I was the, they put a heart in, you know. Oh, they didn't yeah, have that's that's brain. You know. <laughs> Well, no, they removed the heart when you became a Trump fan, didn't they? That's what I'm saying. They took away your brain. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, I, I was trying to think. Um, oh, boy, I'm trying to remember now. There was something I wanted to say about this, and I, I completely forgot it. Oh, forget it. I'm getting old. Uh -huh. I'm, you know, it's time for me to retire. Uh, yeah, Jeff's got his hand up. What? Yeah. Jeff's got his hand up. Jeff. Yes, Jeff. So I was uh, talking about how do I get around here? Because basically I stay at home. That's mm -hmm. my safety mm -hmm. issue. And my wife pretty much stays at home too. Mm -hmm. But we, we do go outside and she walks quite a bit. But I ride on my bike. Mm -hmm. And because on my bike, if anybody comes close to me, I go to the other side of the road. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. I turn around, whatever. I just stay away from any any person. Now, outside, outside of your age, though, do you have compromising situations because of your stroke and so on? Today? No, I mean, yeah, that make you uh, uh, vulnerable to this disease. Uh, probably for the heart stuff the most. Yeah. It's the most risky thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because I, I haven't asked my doctor on one day. I, I don't really think should. My brain counts yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I want to, I, I really wanted to ask my doctor, and I just haven't gotten a hold of him just to say, am I because I took, uh, you know, I had all this stuff and so on. Oh, here comes Brian Neary back again. I think we lost him is what happened. Okay, he probably should start moving now. Um, yeah, maybe because I connected downstairs. I keep having freezing issues, so, okay. Okay, so when will, no, we still don't have you, though. Yeah. Yeah, I just clicked it. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. There's Brian. Um, no, what was I going to say? Uh, I don't know. Forget it. I started just... with Marjorie Zepidural. Uh, yeah, no, well, but, no, but there was something before then about something. Inoperable that, brain cancer? No, that I had, and I just wondered if I. Oh, well. I don't know. See, I, I wonder whether the, the planting of the seeds and so on made me. Um, uh, protection or risk? Uh, at Addition. risk. At risk. Yeah. Whether it, uh, it you know compromised my immune system or whatever. Now the I assume that the seeds are no longer radioactive. How long has it been now? It's been over two months, and mm -hmm. these things yeah. only last. Yeah, before the COVID, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It usually it usually um, uh, these these seeds stay potent for about two months and then they just die and then you just have these little seeds in you they're inert mm. and whatever and i just wonder that if at any point i was compromised because of being you know not having an immune system did how did it affect my immune system and i have no idea i mean he might tell me nah it doesn't do anything it doesn't you know yeah i'm looking forward to this covid thing going away because I'm going to be going in for some radiation yeah. and don't, uh, I don't want to be more at risk, uh, than, uh, than I would be, you know, without the, you know, with the COVID, I, you know, yeah. I, I'd like to put it off for a couple of months. Well, and you're going to be doing, uh, from what I, what you told me, it's going to be low dose radiation. Seven weeks. Of yeah. It. Mine was like five days of really high dose radiation, yeah. you know, um, and uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I have no idea how any of this compromises your system and who's at risk and who isn't at risk. You know, I That's a question that doctor should be able to answer. I'm I'm sure probably, uh, but then again, I told them my at least his nurse my feeling that I didn't want to get the uh, uh, the blood test and I didn't want to get the. Uh, uh, Yes, I P not not the P well that PSA is the blood test, but okay. the uh, the what do you call it the CT scan, because mm -hmm. I didn't want to go to the hospital because I didn't in the middle of all of this I didn't want to expose myself to the risk, <clears throat> and she understood that, so I assume that there that I was somewhat compromised. They're hearing from a lot of people. I was supposed to have a blood test today's Thursday. I was supposed to have a blood test yesterday, and mm -hmm. my. Regular physical on next Thursday. Instead, I called the doctor and said, nah, yeah. it's an, I mean, why should I? And she said, okay, but we want to still see you because they want to get paid and they're going to do it virtually. Well, the, so, my doctor, uh, I have a sure. neuro, 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 neurologist for my neuropathy. And I'm supposed to see him, I think, in about a week. And they wrote me a note and said, uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you want to, he said, you don't have to come to the hospital. We'll do a you know, telemedicine thing. Yeah. They're doing a lot of that now. Oh, yeah. I've done about they're four They're getting paid. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm and and they get paid for it. You know, they get yeah. paid just yeah. like a, a, a regular visit. But <laughs> what, what they can't do is, they you know, they can't put you up on the table and do the stethoscope. and I can put the camera by my balls so they can check <laughs> the hernia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put, yeah. put, put the camera down by your balls and cough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting a CT scan and a bone scan on the 26th. Yeah, I'm gonna do them both in the same day. Yeah, um, you know, it, it, it's um, and and you 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 had a case where the it looks like the uh, you may have you may have the cancer, right? Yeah. Well, the there's a very good possibility since I had two uh, detectable PSA tests mm -hmm. that came back detectable. Yeah. Uh, that some of the cancer cells ended up 
stay in there. Okay, so how do they know where to do the radiation? Uh, do, do they know where the cancer I, may have shown up? I think that's what the CT scan and the bone yeah. scan is all about. Is they want to really? see if it went to the bone. And CT scan, I think, you know, because they inject you with dye, uh, that's probably uh, where it identifies. Because it. I'll tell you, if, if it is a prostate cancer uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, that it, it is a result of your prostate or sloughing off from your prostate, hormone treatment will help kill that. They're going to do both. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, what, what what happens when you get the hormones? That's also the reason why I apologize to him tonight because I'm hoping he leaves me in his will. <laughs> so <laughs> be pretty much there. <laughs> not stuff that you want. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Because <laughs> even if you, even if I didn't want it, you'll send it to me anyway. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, and I know, Phil, I don't want to get into a big argument with you about this, but I think the idea that the president is so reluctant to wear a mask is scary because it, 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 it tells a whole nation of people who love this guy, don't wear a mask. You don't need a mask. I'm not wearing a mask. I don't Did need you ever, one. Do you ever notice that he has breathing problems? Yeah. He does. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that may be part Could of it. Be. Well, no, yeah. I don't think that's the reason he doesn't want to wear a mask. That's the reason he should be wearing a mask. I think he has a deviated septum or something. Well, he's I, deviated. Yeah. All right, <laughs> and it ain't just his septum. Yeah, uh, I don't. I, I, I don't think that's the reason, Phil. I I think it's vanity. Uh, you know, and what I was going to say is, hey, you know, really, a mask might actually help the way you look. Yeah, really. You know, I mean, it just might help. The spray-on tan would get on the mask. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. That's <laughs> a problem. It could be a problem. Or, I had his hand up. Y yes, who's got his hand up? Because I'm having a hard time I, seeing with this man. I, I bought a, uh, a fuck Trump mask today. You know? <laughs> <laughs> fuck Trump on it. <laughs> I was going to say, the N95 that actually is filtering the air is the only one that's going to give you breathing problems. A regular cloth mask doesn't. Yeah filter anything out so you yeah have i i i found that with a cloth mask though with the surgical mask that if i'm walking with it i sometimes have a little trouble breathing with it but uh you know it's just that i i think it's important that people who are in the public eye you know uh, uh show hey look i'm wearing a mask you know you yeah. wear a mask too, Leave you know. Example. I, I want to. Yeah. I want to open up this economy tomorrow. Wear a mask, okay? Um, the, um, uh, I mean, Cuomo never does his press conferences with a mask on, but when he gets up to leave, he's holding a mask in his hand, and he puts it right on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just think it's it's, you know, you lead by example. And I, it bothers me that he's not leading by any kind of example that way. Uh, and, um, and and it, it, I see a lot of people, you know, I see a lot of people in these states that are letting the beaches open up with people not wearing masks and they're too close to each other. And they're just asking for it. You if know? they're outside in a recreational kind of setting, do you think they really need to wear a mask? Oh, yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And more than more yeah, yeah. in that atmosphere than anywhere else because they're breathing heavier, because they're expending more energy. Oh, absolutely, Phil. You know, you know, you know just, can I, I add this? You know, I've been watching Fox News, and they're saying, oh, we were supposed to just flatten the curve. Now, now what are they saying? You know, no. We never said that we were going to open up when we flattened the curve. We said we're going to, you know, we, we, that's the start, you know. What? But, I mean, if you look at Alabama, they, they've got, like, uh, Montgomery County, they, they're, they've they got a, a, a fire down there starting up, going crazy, and their stupid-ass uh, governor wants to open up the state, you know. I mean. Well, it, it's a question of we, – we, Flatten the curve. They're not facing reality. It isn't flattening it's still the curve. Dangerous. It's killing the curve uh, because flattening the curve would simply mean you went up and then you hit a mesa. You know, well, yeah. that isn't exactly flattening anything. It's flattening the curve, but it's not 
doing away yeah. with the people well, who are getting sick. Flattening the curve sick. doesn't mean you stop. You stop when it's way down, the, you know, down yeah. where it started at. Our, here in New York right now, we are to be envied in this respect, that we are, if you, if you looked at the curve, it went up, and then it came down very slowly, came down very slowly. But now where it's down to is about where it was when it started over here, okay? So we've managed to pretty much flatten that curve. And he's still not taking large risks. He's opening up slightly. He's opening up upstate where he can open up, you know, and not, and 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 just a little bit at a time, you know. Let's not rush it. Let's not. We got down this far. We 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 all put our no, uh, noses to the grindstone and we stopped this thing dead in its tracks and brought it back down. Now let's not let it go back up again. Okay, let's not take that chance. And that's the way worse for the economy if that happens. You got oh, oh, if this happens a second time and they've got to close everybody down again, forget it. This yeah. country's toast when it comes to an economy, mm -hmm. just completely toast. That's why you don't want to open it up too fast. You know, better you've got a kind of a depression, recession, it, whatever you can have right now. To, and you have to have a you have to really feel for the people who can't go to work. I mean, there are definitely two sides to this story. There's no question about it. Okay, here's something that Cuomo brought up, and I've been saying, I was saying it on this show before he even brought it up. What happens with these companies who have learned now to operate with less people? Once this is over and they've laid off people, are they going to bring all those people back? And his feeling was that you should not give a bailout to any company yeah. That doesn't guarantee they will hire everybody back, okay? Yeah. Everybody they yeah. let off. And so the that, that's tough to do because it's going to take about a year or more for this economy to rev back up to where it was. So you can't expect companies to go back and go to the spending levels well, they were what at the, what they got, when but, everything ended. Yeah, but, but Rob, what they got this money for was to pay yeah. people. And to make sure they didn't have to lay people off. How much money are they getting and how much money do they oh, have to pay? when you talk about certain companies, I they're getting... I mean, we don't know what their payroll is versus how much money they've given. They're getting, you know, some companies are getting a billion dollars. PPP uh, for the small businesses uh, was two and a half times payroll, uh, the average monthly payroll, a 12-month average times two and a half. And that had to be spent within the eight weeks of when you receive the money. So let's say you got the money two weeks ago, mm -hmm. I, uh, which like I did, I only have six more weeks to use that money for the particular reasons, otherwise it's not forgivable, and then I have to pay it back within two years. Yeah, but also so, what they're saying, what they're saying, Phil, let's say you laid some people off because you couldn't keep them on. Now you got this money. If you got this money, you should have to hire them all back. That's the whole reason for getting the exactly. money. Exactly. Yeah. But what he's but saying, to, what he's he, to, what he's saying is he has a great fear that what he, and he wrote a, a, a op ed item for the New York Times. Oh no, in the in the Washington Post about this, that what he's afraid of are companies who are going to get all this money. What they're going to do come Christmas time, they're going to get big bonuses to their yeah. uh, their. That's, uh, you that's know. the shame on them if they do yeah. that. Well, they but they did it last time. Remember when we had that big bailout? It went to bonuses. SBA offered me more money. I haven't decided whether I'm going to take it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amortized over 30 years, and it's at uh, uh, a very low interest rate. And uh, But you can't use it for bonuses. You can't use it to move your store. Right. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of restrictions uh, on it. Right. And... Uh, so that, that's why I'm hesitating taking it. I have 30 but, days. To but how many, how many, what he was afraid of is how many of these businesses are going to use these layoffs as an excuse not to hire back and become leaner and meaner? You okay. know, uh, a lot of businesses in these years have been running lean and mean, and you couldn't hire people because there was such a, uh, a, a low unemployment rate coming into this. And, uh, you know, it, you may end up hiring different people uh, because, you know, there, there'll be opportunity out there. But you also have to be back to a certain level of uh, what your level was. I think I had eight 
salaried employees mm -hmm. uh, prior, uh, in February. So therefore, in June, I think I have to be back up to that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. And if I'm not, then that money, again, is not forgivable. Uh, what do you think about what we're talking about, Josh? You've been kind of quiet tonight about the fact that a lot of businesses may use this as, as an excuse not to hire people back and to run well, leaner. But if they will, I'm sure they already are. I mean, my work took advantage to dismiss a couple of people that they had been waiting for an ex you know people they didn't really want anymore but didn't really have a reason to get rid of them mm -hmm. and suddenly they had a reason yeah yeah you know yeah. and they they claim they eliminated the positions but there are positions you can't really eliminate uh, yeah. they'll be back in another six months and this time it'll just be with someone younger that they can handpick and control rather than someone who had been with the company for 20, 25, in one case, 30 that, years. That, that's what I was going to say is they'll that's what renew yeah. the position and, and put yeah. somebody young in there or less, yeah. less uh, tenure so yeah. that they don't have to pay all those benefits. So that's that's what they do. Uh, Jeff and then, then Phil. Um, yes, my, uh, my daughter runs uh, part of uh, Mass Medical, uh, medical uh, Facility. And uh, they have all the uh, people who are students there. And they really shut it down for the summer. And a lot of people got uh, terminated because of that. Yeah. yeah. Who were supporting yeah. people. Phil? Uh, there's going to be uh, an, a, a high percentage of small businesses that may not reopen. Uh, they, uh, whether they got PPP or didn't, uh, they, they're in a position where they've been so uh, uh, decimated, uh, and we're talking about a lot of restaurants, uh, that you're going to see a lot of businesses boarded up and, uh, you know, after uh, things start opening again, because they can't. Well, well uh, I, I think I think what Cuomo was particularly... Several, several around here. I mean, you know, yeah. Sunset, uh, or was it Paradise Beach down at uh, Capitola? Yeah. They, they're shutting down. They shut down as of the other day. And that place has been there for, what, 27 years. What, yeah. is that a bar? <laughs> Chuck Oliver is one of the owners. A friend of mine, but yeah. Is that a bar? Yeah, it's a, it's a bar on Capitola right on the beach there. Well, I mean, oh, wow. I think what, 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 what Cuomo wrote about was he was concerned with these co companies who are getting a billion-dollar yeah. bailout who are then going to come back and try and use this period of time as an excuse to really lay people off, to sure. come back leaner and, and downsize their, uh, their needs, as it were. Uh, that, yeah. that was the reason for the oversight committee that they didn't want to put in there. Yeah. And is there going to be an oversight committee? That that's that's you know, was that ever settled? No, no. Was that oversight committee? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's 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 still not going. We're not going to see ourselves out of these woods for several years now, you know. Uh, and uh, and and I would hate to see us go back into it. I would hate to see this thing suddenly come back with a vengeance. Uh, especially because there is a possibility of a second wave. Uh, when we had the 1918, not the 1970, dear President <laughs> Trump, which is a movie, uh, but the, uh, 1918 and 1919, the Spanish flu, um, uh, it, had, it, had, it had three waves. It had a wave, and then it had a higher wave, and then I think my right, Brian, it he had even a, a higher wave than that. A smaller, yeah, smaller wave, but yeah, there was a third wave. There was a yeah. third wave, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to shut down the economy if there's a second wave. You don't think it's going to shut down the economy? I don't think so. Why? Be they, more pests. Too many people have already been out of work so long, and then, yeah. You know, I, we keep feeding it money. You know, it, so we just don't let people die. Yeah, if people are dying, no, whether or not you want to open up your business or not, people aren't going to come to your business. I mean, you know, no matter what you do, I mean, 
you know, what are you going to do? Force people to work in these meat packing plants if they're walking home and dying like flies? I mean, come on. It ain't going to happen. It's like <laughs> it is happening. Well, people you, are dying. Not yet. You got to remember really. the people, the people, what? the people who wait, are. Wait, wait till the, the, you know, people start dying in, in Florida in a couple, in like in a month and, and uh, wherever else uh, these, these Trumpy governors are trying to open up. And, you know. Yeah. You know, Trump's saying, "Oh, we're going to put the fires out." You well, know, there are also yeah. there are also quite a few uh, Democratic governors who feel the pressure, yeah, from the true. public, no. you yeah. know, to to reopen, uh, and you know, I they're going around protesting. We have the right to. You no, know, you don't have a right to make me sick. I'm sorry. Exactly. You don't have the right to make me sick. I have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, just like you do. Yeah. You know. And nobody's telling you that, you know, that this is a police state. And, you know, they're just asking you to help. Just help. Well, I ended up going out to dinner last night. Yeah? And how yeah. was it? It was great. I went out Where? to dinner. We went, to, uh, we went out to this little town out here outside of town. It's a town of 500. It's mm -hmm. a Trace Pinos Inn, a little place. Yeah. And uh, it was two, four... Six, seven, eight, nine people in the restaurant. We were three wow. of them. It was fifteen people, fifteen feet apart from everybody else. Oh, okay. It was quiet. What, what city? In Trace Pinos, outside of Hollister here. Trace, oh, okay. Or as they probably call it, Trace Penis, right? Yeah, Trace <laughs> Penis. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's our, you know, really good steaks and stuff, and it was our twentieth anniversary. So I, I, you know, we weren't going to go out, and my daughter said, "I'm not going out. I'm not going." She finally said. Well, I guess we can try it. And we thought, okay, we'll go and do our mass. And they, it's a nice little, you know, country uh, today, steakhouse. Today, Marjorie heard the name of a city in, 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 the, in California. And she said, where is that? And I said, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of towns I've never heard of in California. You, every day you're finding out about a town you never heard of before. Mm. And she said, well, what's uh, uh, San Gabriel? And I went, I don't know where San Gabriel is. And then I thought That's for a second, funny. I went, oh, you mean San Gabriel. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, we have, we have uh, Los Banos across, across the hill, Los Banos. Yeah. 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 Bathroom. 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 And where Kevin is, there's a lot of small, Gonzales and all these other really small areas, right? Yeah. 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 My yeah. first night in California, I stopped I, in with a friend of mine from San Luis Obispo, and we went to Pozo. I don't know if you know where Pozo is. No it's idea. Up in the mountains, uh, and they have a, a the Pozo is a post office, a landing strip, and a bar. Uh, and uh, in that bar, they get all sorts of top musicians who fly in, and they'll jam. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know where that is. And, and that was my first night in California, uh, December thirtieth, nineteen seventy three. Wow. Wow! Yeah. Wow! 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 Well, yeah, it was it was nice. It was nice. It was nice to get out, actually. Well, this has been a nice, quiet evening, hasn't it? Spent with the, with the guys. Yep. Uh, we could use a woman in here, but you know. Well, I'll be taking hormones soon. But yeah, yeah, you'll you'll be crying <laughs> like a baby, and then you'll be my bitch. Yeah. Uh, Phil, thank you for being here, Phil. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Brian. Always good having you here. Rob, great to have you here. Charlie, Jeff, um, um, uh, <laughs> the little kid, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, Josh. Uh, and, uh, oh, let's see here. Uh, Kevin and uh, uh, Patrick. And uh, I think Ray's been frozen for the last hour. And John Larkin. Uh, that's a ukulele, right? A uke. A uke. Uh -oh. Yeah, sometimes when you get a chance, we'll have you play it for us. Anyway, yeah, that's, it. that's it. We've, 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 we've kind of... Right. Oh, oh, really? That's a soprano. Well, the Dude. two of you should... Uh, well, you're frozen, I think, Brian, for some reason. I don't know what happened. But anyway... Um, okay. Well, let's all get our ukuleles out later on in the week, okay? Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, will you? Yeah, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. I'll wave back at them. Here, that's a Patrick wave I'm doing there. That's, 
Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, good, good panel and a good show. And uh, we really thank them all for calling. Uh, they maybe some of them will stick around and call in to meet up with Jack Bishop next. He'll be here with the uh, intersection next over most of the same gabnet. I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>